Uh, guys, what I'm actually going to do here first too is I got to take all these studs out of their little casing. So these studs come in these little cases like this. So I'm going to take them out of all their casings here first and then just start them in, like just get them lubed up. So I've got the ARP assembly loop here. You're going to want to make sure you put this on. Uh, put it down the threads. You could use oil too. I just have so much of this that I'd rather use this because I've got I don't know, tons of it. So putting that down in there just because I think it works a little bit better. Um, it's proper assembly, but I need to push all these out of the tubes first and then I'm just set them in and then start twisting them down in. Again, guys, I'm going to start with some assembly loop here. Get some worked out. And then, like I said, I've got my gloves on here. I'm going to work it in. Again, you don't have to be crazy with it either, but if I got it, might as well use it. It's how I look at it. It's better to do this. I mean, again, you can use oil also, but I've just always used assemb or the assembly loop it's because well, I've always had it. So, again, just starting it. Then move on to the next one and just do that for every one. I'm not sure what you guys are doing tonight, but hope you're all having a good night. So I'm gonna speed this up now and I'll get some music going. Guys, one thing I wanted to say here too is, again, you're supposed to just get it hand tight and then I'll show you what you do from here. But again, I'm just putting it in hand tight right now. So just spinning, as you can see, not even, got this little tool here I like to use. Again, just wait till I feel it bottom out. And again, just spinning it. Uh, I've seen some guys use power tools with this. And if you worked in a performance shop, I probably would, um, but I just don't like to take any chance. It's my engine or if it's customer's engine, someone else's, I would do the same way. When I did Colton's, we did the same. I just don't like to take any risks. Um, don't want to see anything happen. So just better off just doing it like this. I can feel it come down. I know I'm not over torquing it, but yeah. And apparently anyone can make boo-boos too. Put the wrong end in guys. How stupid is that right now? Um, <laughs> idiot. I actually did it for these two back here. I'm like, why are those like that? Like, how dumb can I be? Uh, and again, that's why I don't rush. Um, so this is why I usually take my good time because you don't want to rush stuff like this. So need to put it on the right side of this and put that back in and then clean this end off. Also guys, if you're curious what I had to use to install this, this is a 3 16 So if you guys can see this here, I'm just using a Craftsman 3 16 to put those in again. When I put those in, I'm literally putting no pressure. So you can see I'm holding the tool like so, and I spun them in like this. Like it literally tells you in the instructions, hand tight. So like spin it in, bottoms out, no more. Don't crank it down. I've seen people do a half turn. Do not, I repeat, do not do that. Leave it like it is, okay? Now from here, we've got all the studs installed. Great. Check the surface again. You should check it before, check it during, and check it after. Check, check, check. Okay, the surface looks good to me. I'm gonna go over it one more time with a nice towel. Um, what I need to do before I get any to get too far is I need to make sure I put my dowels in. In this case, I have two different dowels, front and back. And the reason for this is we have one dowel that we've kind of machined down. Um, there was a slight stress crack here at the front of the block. We're gonna put the dowels in. So the front dowel, which is this one here, is slightly machined down versus the one in the back is just you know factory. So we're gonna go ahead and start install that one first, then put this one back there. Again, two dowels that helps align up the head. This helps center the head onto your block. Put those on, then we'll put the head gasket and then we can start cranking it down. 
And I'm going to show you a couple other things in between all that too, but that's kind of the order we're going to go in. Some other things we need to do with the washers before you put it on the head because I'm going to explain to you why you need to put the washers in first too. So one thing I want to show you guys, these washers, you have to put these in ahead of time. Um, I got my music bumping over here. Uh, you have to put these in ahead of time. The reason being, if you see how tight it is in here, you won't be able to put those in once you slide this down on, the studs are up through, you won't be able to get these down through. See? Won't work. So you have to like sliver them down through and pop them in ahead of time. So this one isn't in yet, so we're going to drop this down. And that one fell down really easily, thankfully. And I just kind of centered up. And that's it. Just sits down in there. The rest are already in. Just wanted to show you guys that. Make sure you put those in ahead of time. I just want to want to go ahead and put them in now. Um, because next thing I'm going to do is put the head on it. Like all I was going to do is plop it on, uh, sit it down on. And then these are half inch 12 points. And we're going to do 33, 66, and we're going to finish off with 100 foot pounds. And on, let's move this out of the way here. Got stuff sitting over everything here. ARP gives you a little torque sheet, tells you right here, 100 foot pounds. It tells you in three equal steps up to 100 foot pounds. So I just always write it down just to show you guys too. 33, 66, and then we're gonna get to 100. Technically, 33, 66 would be 99. One extra foot pound, not gonna kill us. Um, come with the sheet too. If you have a Toyota book, it will show you this, but I like that ARP has it. The torque sequence, this is what exactly what's out of the Toyota book. So if you want to, this is what I like to do too. Front of the engine, or front of the head, back of the head, mark of the head, one, two, um, excuse me, three, four, five, six, mark the physical head. This way you can't forget what you're doing. So actually write on there with a marker and then you can, if you want to, after you're said and done, take it off the brake cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, just so I don't forget. And this is the way I've always done it. All right, guys, now you see I've got the head gasket on here. If you guys wanna see this here, what do we got? Here is the part number for the head gasket. This is an OEM toy head gasket. Um, Multi-layer steel head gasket. This is what 99% of people use, so that's what I recommend y'all use too. Uh, that's what I've been using for years and 99% of people use too, so I'm no one special for this. Now we have to put the head on. Again, we already talked about put the washers on. Um, I don't really have a good angle of doing this because I got myself kind of pinned against this table here, so I'm gonna try and do this. This is not exactly going to be the way I'd like to do it, um, but we're gonna have to try and get this done here. So let me spin this around. And there we go. Kind of squeeze myself in here. And there we go. Get this one lined up. Okay. And then come back here and get these lined up. So I can see where I'm off here. Slowly come down. Because again, you're coming down slowly because you've got all your washers. And then you're on. All right. So the head's on now, guys. All right. Next thing I'm going to do here is start. Um, threading these on, but what you need to do, um, so if we can look here, so for this here, you're just gonna put the ARP lube on this mating surface here, and that's what you're torquing down against, so you don't need to put it on the threads or anything of that nature, you're just putting it on this surface, not on the washers, no need for that, just this surface here is what you're putting it on, which is the actual nut itself. This is a half inch is what you're using too, so that's a half inch 12 point. Um, you're gonna do again 33, 66, and then 100 foot pounds, Final. Again, just like that paper showed, um, we're gonna do it in that crisscross pattern. So I'm gonna show all this just because, and we sped up a little bit, but I'm gonna show all of it. So the 33, then the 66, and then the 100 foot pounds, just for you guys. When doing this, guys, the other thing I do is I take a magnet. So I take a magnet, go down in here, use that to kind of start it. And then once it's started, pull up off. Makes it easy, because you're trying to think, well, Ryan, how do I get that on there, right? And I just, I've been doing it this way. I'm not sure if other people do it this way, but how I've done it. Um, again, please someone correct me if that's wrong, but that's the way I've done it. And this isn't my favorite magnet to even use for this. So again, this is just a start it to. All right, next one. Again, I've got just ARP lube over here. I'm just dabbing it on and then going one by one on here.
Now I'm just gonna draw these down. So just gonna spin them down by hand just to get them down onto the head. No special order for this. Um, just to get them down before I start torquing everything up. Uh, you want everything as close to where it should be as possible. So I'm just spinning, spinning, spinning again. Some, mo not some, most guys use power tools here. I just, I don't know, I just feel better doing it by hand. Uh, I don't do this very often. When I do get to do it, I really enjoy it. Um, so, don't mind doing this. I just kinda, I don't know. This is like my favorite part. I think a lot of people are, disassembly is fun too, don't get me wrong. Disassembly is a lot easier for the fact that you're not worried about torque specs, you're just ripping shit off versus uh, make sure everything's perfect. Um, this is more fun for me than anything else. Uh, I got one more to go and done. Um, now again, we'll start from the center here and we'll go over the numbers real quick. All right guys, again, I've got the torque sequence numbers on here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, we're starting at 33 foot pounds. I've got a digital torque wrench here. So I'm gonna turn this on. I wanna show you guys this too. If you guys can see here, set to 33 foot pounds right now. Um, we're starting the center and then work ourselves out. So let's go. Ooh, I don't like that. Okay guys, 33 foot pounds is done now. Now we're gonna up it, so let's take this and we're gonna up this to 66 now. Having a digital torque wrench is nice. You don't have to have one. Right, so if you guys can see that there, now we're set to 66. I might have to hold the engine a little bit more now, but again, same process. So number one, all right, and again, repeat. Two, three, four, five. Again, Okay, 66 foot-pounds is done. 
Now we're going for the last one. We're going to turn this up to 100 foot-pounds now. This will be the last one we do. All right. So I want you guys to be able to see that there. 100 foot-pounds. All right. This is where it's going to get fun because i got to really hold the engine stand now. This is where it kind of sucks. One's done. This is where it sucks. And that, guys, is 100 foot-pounds. So we're done. 33, 66, 100. We done. So she's nice and cranked down. I can see just from looking at the camera now, this has moved around a good bit, but that's cranked down. That's what it's supposed to be set at. So heads on. Like, I'm pumped. It's centered on, heads on, gaskets on. Yeah, like, sweet. So now on to all the other fun stuff. Now, something else I'm gonna do next is put on some titanium short studs. Uh, these are from Bear Boost Performance. You guys have heard me use this before. These are actually off the old head, um, but they don't go bad because they're titanium. And just another thing to note, do not crank these down. Like, see how I'm putting them in, finger tight? Like, that's all you need to do. I see guys and they'll take these and they're like, Arr. no, don't do that. These are like head studs. Do not do that. You will crack the head. Uh, unfortunately for Alex, oh, who had got my last head, um, I knew it had, one little like issue with it but he found like legitimate like the fucking casting had cracked uh and then i believe like actually on the head he found something else like some shit or didn't make me too happy make me feel a little bit like a pos because i'm like i wouldn't sold it that way or sold it the way i did I should say i would sell it but i would sell it you know with disclosed information like hey it has some of these issues but uh yeah did not realize it had some of that stuff and a little bit upsetting because you know you don't ever sell anybody anything and they go, hey man, what's this crap? So that's the kind of stuff you don't want to happen. I don't think anyone does. I don't think anyone genuinely wants to be a piece of crap. Uh, yeah, I mean, you want to be the best person you possibly can. So again, let's switch these in. I really genuinely enjoy doing this. Like it makes me so freaking happy. And ring, ding. Uh, these are short studs too. So I see some of the other titanium studs out there, guys. I see people talk about them. These are truly shorter studs. So these are the same length as the OEM Toyota studs. So these will work with all the crazy manifolds out there. These are what you have to use. And Oh, I forgot one. Because it has another one. That's why. Burp. Um, these are what you need to use to work with those crazy manifolds. I think I actually have some Toyota ones downstairs I could actually demonstrate or show against. But I helped um, JT when he was making these like get the right lengths and measure it and stuff. And this is what he came out with. And these are really, really dope. And they come with 12 point and six point. And you're probably asking, well, Ryan, why do I need 12 and six point? The reason you need 12 and you need six is for the fact that the top can be pretty 12. 12 points just look cool. Let's be honest, 12 points look cool. Uh, but for the bottom, when you just got to put an open end a wrench on these guys here, it's hard to use a 12 point. So he sells these. Whoops, and it almost dropped it. Ah, caught it. Check that out. Got it. Uh, he sells these six points with it. Come on. Why isn't it going on? There we go. So these six points, you can put an open end a wrench on it and crank it down. Pretty cool. I was really happy he started doing that. Makes it a lot easier. But now all of our pretty studs are in. And look how nice that looks. Perfecto.